I know that LSAT prep can be seem boring sometimes. It can be a bit of a grind. It can be stressful. I totally hear you on that. That being said, though, if you enjoy the process, if you find it fun, it'll be that much easier to put in the work towards getting that top LSAT score. So today I wanted to share with you three ways to master the LSAT and enjoy the process along the way. Way number one is to not do it alone. Don't do it alone. Find others who are on the LSAT prep journey as well, who can be there with you every step of the way. You could find study buddies, a study group, or join a live online class, work with a private one-on-one -on -one coach or tutor. But the key here is that you don't wanna be isolated on your LSAT prep journey because you're putting in too many hours to do this all by yourself. And if you find others who are going for the LSAT as well, going to law school as well, you can actually make lifelong friends in the process of studying for the LSAT. These are not, these are not just people you'd be with for the LSAT alone, but you could stay in touch with them. Maybe you even end up going to the same law school as them and create relationships that last all the way into your legal career. Of course, at LSAT Unplugged, we aim to foster community. We have live online small group sessions, typically six to eight students max to ensure personalized attention and we conduct our classes using zoom meetings not some big webinar which means that you can actually see the other students in the group you can get to know them we have study groups every single night of the week so that you can connect with other students as well there in a more informal and collaborative setting students of course can also connect with the instructors and the tas to develop those relationships get feedback and support but most of all just build those relationships because you never know when you'll want to call on someone because as the saying goes, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And so if you're spending time with other people who've been through the LSAT process already or are still in the LSAT process themselves, that will encourage you to spend more time on your LSAT journey as well, rather than getting pulled in all directions with other obligations like work, school, and such. Method number two, for every question you get wrong, I don't want you to get discouraged by the failure. Instead, I want you to learn from those failures and treat each question you get wrong as an opportunity to learn something new. Because the thing is, the point of doing LSAT questions, the point of taking time sections or full length practice tests is not just to measure yourself. The point is to give yourself chances to get things wrong so that you'll learn from your mistakes. If you were getting every single question right, that would mean either you're getting 180s on actual test day, or more likely perhaps, you're only tackling easy questions. So I want to encourage you, do some tougher questions. You don't have to do nothing but tough questions. You can mix in some easier ones here and there, or maybe you're gonna do full LSAT sections to work on your pacing and to work on your endurance in the lead up to the test. But you don't wanna do nothing but easy questions or else what's the point really? You already know you're able to get those right. You wanna handle intermediate difficulty questions or hard questions to make sure that you're encountering things similar to those you'll encounter on test day, but you get it wrong now, so you don't get it wrong on LSAT test day. You give yourself opportunities to review difficult questions that you would have gotten wrong on the exam so you can figure out which tricks and traps that you personally are uniquely prone to falling for so you can extract those key takeaways from that discussion of that difficult question so that you can avoid making the same mistakes again. Method number three, reward yourself every time you hit a certain milestone. Now, you could be watching Legally Blonde, you could watch Suits, you could watch really whatever you want, but the idea here is that you have checkpoints along your LSAT prep journey where you're giving yourself a de dedicated time to take a break from the LSAT once you've hit your goal for the day. So for me personally, I found those 500-page LSAT textbooks so boring that I would reward myself by watching an episode of Chappelle's show after I finished each single chapter in the book. So I finished the chapter, I took a break, watched an episode of the show, back to the book. I wouldn't let myself take breaks in the middle of a chapter because then I was too prone to give myself a break whenever I encountered a hard part of the chapter or a hard practice question. So instead, I said, I've got to finish the entire chapter before I can take a break. And so those mini rewards along the way helps motivate me to get through the entire textbook. So you can set your own goals. Maybe it's every course lesson video you watch, you take a break. Maybe it's every single timed practice test you complete, you take a break. Or maybe it's even just every single individual timed section of 25 questions or so, you take a break. You can start small and build up from there. Maybe at the start, you can only get through five or 10 questions before taking a break. But over time, you build your LSAT stamina, you build your LSAT endurance, so that before you know it, you're ready for test day and able to complete those four sections timed with only the 10 minute break in the middle, and that's it.
of course, you don't want to be checking your phone or checking the answer key after every single individual question because that's not what you can do on test day. You got to build up the endurance. So again, the three ways, don't do it alone. Find a study group, a class, a coach, or a tutor, but don't do it in isolation. Of course, you can find out more about the hour options at Elson Unplugged below this video. Method number two, treat each question you get wrong as a chance to learn something new. And method number three, reward yourself along the way each time you hit a milestone. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you find the video helpful. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.